What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Off the Couch Boxing. I'm your host, Reckless Rex Ruger, along with the Alexis Arguello puppet. And I'm your other host, Frank Benjis, and we're back with another one. Yes, we are. He's and already I'm... here. Yeah, punctuality is always... Uh, punctuality is always loved and saluted, and Dominic Gwynn has come through in spades. Look at him over there, man. Looking big good. Cigar. Big cigar. Got the big cigar. cigar. What are we celebrating, champ? What are we celebrating? No, nope, we can't hear him. Oh, you got to hey, push the little mic. Hey, man, how you doing? There he hey. is. Good, good, good. How's it going, Dominic? Good. Glad we were finally able to make this. I love the fact. I love the fact that you got the big stogie hang out of your mouth. Are we celebrating something? Are we just enjoying a Sunday? Enjoying Sunday. I'm uh up here at uh at my favorite place, the the cigar lounge that I'm at that I belong to, uh in nice. the, uh here in Houston, Texas. So uh just having a good time, having a little drink and uh a little cigar, and that's it. Enjoying that uh I'm retired and I ain't gotta get in the ring and take yeah. another there you know. go. Now he's what talking, about he's talking, what about he's talking, hey, wait a minute, he's talking fifth ward shit. Fifth yes. ward, shout out fifth ward. Yes, well. I'm not in Fifth Ward. I'm in Sugar. But well, we had Ward. Reggie Johnson. Well, well, a couple weeks ago, we had Reggie Johnson on. He shouted out Fifth Ward, man. And, and then we got into a whole discussion about the Ghetto Boys. That's my big brother. Yeah, <laughs> love him. Love him. What a guy, man. What a legend, man. But but we're here to talk about you. And first of all, I want to say immediately that I want to I, I want to ask you about well, when I was doing my research and coming up with stuff, topics to talk to you about, I came across an interview that you may or may not remember. It's from nine years ago, but uh, you were talking quite a lot of hot shit about Tyson Fury. Now that he's our actual heavyweight champion, has your Yo, opinion about him changed? Uh oh, uh oh. That's that's Forrest, the one that the best promoter down here in Houston, and he owns the lounge that I'm at. Uh, nice. Yo, what up? Yeah, it, it made lounge here in Sugar. 2527 Town Center Boulevard. I told I him love, to come in, but it was loud. That's why I came out. And I love the fact that he just came into the shot and just got all gangster right over your shoulder like that. Gave us the yeah, heart. He, he was he was ice grilling us, man. I like well, that. Well, we always rocking red. Uh, <laughs> zero rock blue. That's my boy. <laughs> we rock red, so it's all good. But has your opinion of Tyson Fury changed now that he's the champ? Because you said, and I don't want to get the quote wrong, but you said that you would knock him out and he'd wake up with your dick in his mouth. Yes. And you know wow. what? <laughs> I'm not a Tyson Fury fan. I'm pulling for Yusuf. I wish he would have called me over there. I would have went over there and helped train him and get him ready for that. Or if he wanted me to get in there and spar, I would have. Um, but what I, what I will say about Tyson Fury is I never once negated his ability to box right he one he deserves to be heavyweight champion of the world because he can box yeah now the smack he's talking he's bagging it up so like I say i'm i'm not gonna i just dislike him as a person because of him and our relationship when i ran into him i was fighting his cousin huey fury i went mm -hmm. to London and it was the sixth round why i don't like him it was the sixth round in the middle of the sixth round Tyson Fury is telling his uh, Huey Fury, hit him with the Popeye's chicken. So I thought, to me, I thought that was kind of being a little racist. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he was right. I was in London, and I couldn't find no Popeye's chicken. <laughs> I don't, hey, I don't know if I, hey, I don't know if I like that one either. Dominic. I don't know. If, yeah, I, I got to roll with you on that one, man. I'm not so sure, man. I mean, I. I so, so you got my drift. So I kind of took it as it was, it was a low blow. So I turned yeah. around. Middle of the fight, if you look at the fight, in the middle of the fight, I stopped and I said, That's some racist shit. I, but I knew where I was. I said, You know what? Don't worry about it. When I see you in the United States, I'm going to be on your ass. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Cause, I would cause, hey, we do got that Popeye's chicken. Fuck that UK breakfast. Hell yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 And plus, and, and plus, I've never heard, uh, you know, give them the Popeye's chicken. Uh, Ever used in the uh, in the in, in boxing terminology at all? So he can't even he can't even cover that up and say that that's some kind of like a secret code for some kind of a, a punch yeah. or something. That just sounds blatant racist. Yeah, but you know I don't I don't think he's racist. I just think he was just trying to mess with me because yeah. he talked before he had hit me on uh, he hit me on on uh, Instagram and we were talking about fighting. But what he offered me was bullshit, and I'm like, man, I'm I'm not coming way across that water for that little money. Yeah, said, give me some money, I'll come over there. 
That's so, I mean, I know, and I know that's what it was. So, like I say, I know he's not a racist. Um, I, I like, I do like him as far as boxing, the boxing standpoint, because he, he's a big man and he can box. And yeah. I think he's beating a lot of these guys. Um, I'm a fan of uh, Deontay Wilder. I just hated that fight. Deontay Wilder shouldn't have never took that fight. The first fight. And I wouldn't have fought him two more times after the first fight. But I'm not going to say, I'm not going to go into that, but. He should have never took that fight from the start because just the style, style make fights, and this style was not good for him. Well, yeah. I'm curious. I know, I'm curious to know what you think about because we just had that day of reckoning, and we saw Parker come out and beat Wilder, but we also saw jo uh, Joshua win in pretty dominant fashion. And now because of that, it looks like they're saying that Ngannou is going to fight Joshua. You know what? I heard. You know what? I would love to fight him because they sitting there talking about, and I'm I'm 48 years old. 49 in April. I would fight uh one I fight either one of them, but I would fight that big uh is it Iganu? Iganu. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would fight him because they talking about how hard he hit and stuff. I I I I think you I mean I think that uh Tyson Fury, it just depends. I'm, I'm gonna say this. With at, at, as a heavyweight, and I was a heavyweight, I think because it was Iganu, he was able to see that shot, and that's why he was he went down, he was able to get back up. Yeah, I, I feel with myself, I'm faster, and he's not gonna see my left hook coming. He's not gonna see my right hand coming. I'm a lot faster, and I think it's gonna hurt him faster. And I well, think I either one of them out. Just because we're on the topic, I, I'm just curious about this because as a, there's a lot of speculation around this. People still batter about it a lot. Um, but uh, Fury and Wilder in the first fight, Wilder took a punch, or no, Fury took a punch at the end in round. 11 or 12 it was, and, and he went down a punch he didn't see coming. He got rocked bad, but he got back up. But a lot of people say that was a long count. What do you think about that? I don't think it was a long count. No, I didn't either. But, I mean, if, if, if like say, you gave him, if you gave him to 12 or 13 and he still was able to get up and he was functional, he was not, uh, if, if he was hurt or wobbled and stuff, he got up and he was able to fight. Yeah, right. As I, Free, but he didn't. He didn't show any signs of not being able to control himself. So I think. I think it. it you know, he had enough time. It, it wasn't. It, I don't know what I'm looking for, but it was. It wasn't too much. I think. Well, it might I think, I think sometimes. I think sometimes people's common misconception is that a 10 second count is actually 10 seconds, right. but it's not because it's just us counting the 10. Yeah. One. One, yeah, uh, you, know what I mean? and, 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 you know, and also some guys don't immediately go to their neutral corner either, you know, so he's not even really supposed to start counting until yep. they, uh, you know, and, and, and while there was doing a little bit of celebrating and blowing Fury a kiss and doing his little dance there. So, I mean, <laughs> it didn't work out. Yeah, that didn't work out. No, it didn't. And now you had a lot of great names on your resume, but was there a fight when you were actively fighting that we talked about, you know, possibly fighting Fury, but is there one fight that you got close to in your career that you really wanted and it, it didn't come to fruition? Deontay Wilder. Okay. Um, but I'm going to be honest with you. I think um, I was asking for that fight, but like I said, I'm 48 years old now. Um, they they seem to say that you pass your prime. Yeah, I think I'm past my prime, but at the same time, um, I think I had a lot left maybe 10 years ago when I was asking, asking for Deontay Wilder. Yeah. Um, I had the opportunity to go in that arm with him. Um, great guy. Great guy. Yeah. Treated me well, paid me well. Um, and I was pulling for him. With uh, anybody that's in the United States, when they go fight overseas, I'm pulling for him. I don't yeah. care. Like I say, if we had something going, like I say, I'm, I'm USA. And, um, and I was pulling for him in, in everything he's done outside of, like I say, fighting me. I mean, I know, I know, like LeBron James is not in the boxing; it's a different sport. But mm -hmm. he started to make me believe that the prime of a man is really not as young as we think it is. Mm -mm. You know That's what not. I mean? Like That's we true. tend to think it's it's twenty five to thirty, and then once you're thirty five, you're shot. Yeah, but I think by thirty five, you're the best you've ever been. Yeah, because you now you kind of figure you figure everything out. Okay, I need to really get my rest. Like Bernard Hopkins said, I need to get my rest. I need to have my feet up in the air by eight o'clock. Yeah, I, right. I need to do this. And like say, if if you're treating yourself right, and like say you're not out here boozing like I am right now. So <laughs> guys, 
if you guys decide that y'all want to call me for a fight, please give me two or three months. I guarantee I'll be ready. No, I'm joking. But anyway. Um, You're retired, yeah, man. You're retired. You get to be bozo. Enjoy smoking. it. Enjoy it, Dominic. Enjoy it. You're pulling for the Lions. I can tell. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> And, 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 and so that being said, I'd like to ask, like, you know, as a, as a guy that's on the sidelines now and not still boxing, when you see these, when you see these gimmick fights come up, we ask everybody about these, you know, uh, like Nganu, an MMA guy versus a, a boxer, or you see these YouTubers fighting. Do you like these because they bring eyes to the sport or do you think it's kind of a, a big circus? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, I don't want to knock anybody. I don't want to knock your hustle because, like I said, you're not knocking my. Um, right. If that's the way to feed your family, no, I'm I'm not gonna think about it. Now, what I will say is, does it does do I think it looks bad for boxing sometimes, or it, it it puts a uh uh kind of black eye on boxing? I kind of feel that way, but on some of these fights, no, I don't. Um, because like I said, you got MMA, you got UFC, you got a whole bunch of stuff going. On. So no, I, I'm not gonna say. I don't think it's bad. Is it a bad look? Is it a bad look when Nganu fights our quote unquote, you know, well, he is our, our, our heavyweight champion right now, regardless of how you feel about Tyson Fury. Is it a bad look when he comes in there with no actual boxing experience and he drops our heavyweight champ though? Is that a bit, is that a loss for boxing? No, I don't think so. I just think just the, the, um, the level or the, the, what's the word I'm looking for for right now? Right now, the because to me, I think the heavyweight division is popping right now because yeah. there's so many guys out there right now that's uh vibing or trying to get in position to be number one or to get to the fight. But yeah. time you have these promoters out here that's like say trying to get their guy there, maybe the two guy, the three guy, he's trying to get his guy there. And I think at the same time, everybody is jockeying and trying to get their guy in the big money fight. That's what it's yeah. about. Yeah, I'm trying. Money. Now I'm trying to make my money back that I'd invested in you. So yeah. uh, I'm, I'm not knocking it. Just I don't I don't think so. Well, well, we just I just brought this up to the last guy we were talking to, and and he, he agreed to uh, Jose Rivera. But uh, it was you know like Amanda Serrano, somebody like that. She's a real boxer, and now she's getting paid to fight with him. On yeah, you do get paid on his cards. You, you do know, get paid. Like, yeah, he's doing something for the sport, I guess, but. I don't know. I, I don't love it though. Gotcha. It kind of feels a little bit. It kind of feels a little bit like the WWF I, a little bit. Yeah, love it. I don't love it. I don't like it. But uh, I, live, you know, I live with it. Yeah, I'm gonna live with it. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. live with it. Now you got a lot of great names on your resume, but who gave you the toughest fight? I can't even go through your resume. You, I mean, you, you you fought all the tough bastards back in your day, man. Who gave you the toughest fight? I'm gonna be honest with you. Who gave me my toughest fight? Myself, I've been. Yeah. Oh, we've heard that answer. We've heard that answer. Yeah, that's James, a good one. The James Tony answer. I like that answer. Uh, oh, for real? Yeah, James, that's my boy. I, I call him. Yeah. Big. And, and uh, I think James, I think James, the James, same exact answer. I think the only reason, Jake, but James Tony has the right mindset for a fighter, and and and, and I think you, we've talked about this before. You are towing the line between arrogant and confident, and James Tony is is certainly confident because when we had him on here, even even if he has ten losses on his record, you still can't convince him that anybody beat him. Right. Hey. That's how he's or, built. Or, or or they would beat him again. He's like, that guy don't want to fight me. He wouldn't fight me. Yeah, he would never fight again. <laughs> right. Now, no, I'm going to be honest with you on that. Now, the fights I know I've lost, I have no problem with saying I lost. Yeah. Now, fights out there that I know I could have did better, and I didn't go in there here. Yes. Um. And, and I felt like in every single fight I've ever had, in my 13 losses, nobody beat me. I beat myself. And that's why I felt like. They wouldn't fight me again because they was lucky. They was happy that that Dominic Wynn showed up. And like I say, yeah, I, I'm not gonna say I had stuff going on in my head, but I had stuff going on in my head. Like I said, I trained, I bust my ass. Every every fight I've ever went into, I was in top shape. I was ready to fight, but I was mentally here and I wasn't there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I feel like that's something that I'm gonna say it on our show right now. It's something that we don't get to express enough. But men's mental health is just yeah. as important as anybody else's. And it honestly, is. we don't dig into it enough, bro, because yeah. we got to deal with a lot of shit. Yes. And yeah. Just, and I think there's just, just, we and just I also think there's a stigma. Our shoulder and live with it, man. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. I think there's a stigma that we're supposed to take all this on our shoulders and not crack, you know? You know what? Now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go into this. Um, I work for uh I moved to Las Vegas 2012. I worked for a drug and alcohol program to where I was like a, a counselor. Mm -hmm. and what we used to do, we used to have to deal with um police officers, uh ambulance drivers, firefighters, and it was crazy because I really didn't understand it. But now what you were sitting there saying, I I totally understand that mental health because I, I never thought about this until a police officer came into the job and said this. He said, we deal with this every single day to where, like say you go to one call, it's a it's a, a husband and wife. A husband killed the the wife and 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 and, and probably raped the daughter. Yeah. Then turn around, you go straight from that call to the next call and that's where another kid and got burned up in the house uh, and it's just all day long and they never get to just uh decrease or just get to talk about that to let it down yeah so when people try to knock police officers which you know it's some um, it's some i'm not gonna say one or two it's a, just a few bad police yeah. officers out there but at the same time you don't know what they're going to because they they didn't get to debrief and just let it go right talk about it and this yeah. is so you turn around, and you, you turn around, and next thing you know, one of them pulled a gun and shot somebody because he got a lot of shit going on. Yeah. And, and even, I'm off the subject, but. No, no, no. It's no, a, it's no a you're right on. You're right on. Because yeah. you, know, you, you really think about it, man. Even if as, even as a man, we get to debrief. We get to think about it. Do we yeah. really overcome it? Do we really deal with it? Right. From the end, it's one of how do we deal with it? You know, how do we deal with it? Wear on you forever. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's nice that you can go, you know, it's nice that you can go enjoy a cigar, uh, you know, enjoy a cocktail and blow off some steam. Some people, man, that's not enough. And that's when they take it all the way left with the heroin or, or, or hard drugs or alcoholism. Well, I, or, it's crazy. You say this is what I do every day. I yeah. get up in my, 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 my normal routine. I tell people this all the time here in Houston. I said, if you ever hear me getting in any trouble, that means somebody didn't came to one of the three spots I go to every day. Yeah. I, I <laughs> I go to Charlo Gym. I train my clients, my personal clients I have in the morning. Yeah. I go to this lounge about 11, 12 o'clock. I might have a drink. I might have a smoke. Um, I don't smoke like maybe one cigar a day, or I yeah. might go a few days. But I smoke my, weed, champ. That's all good. Okay. My routine is <laughs> just to just to get myself out of the bullshit. Yeah. I like here I need it. Him, I'm back here. And like I said, I have a drink, have a smoke, and that's my way of just letting my day go by. I'm good. Whatever, whatever comes to me tomorrow, I'm gonna deal with it. I really started. I really started to realize, man, that the more men I've come across in life, met at jobs and this and that, that's really like I don't meet a man that doesn't go home and and have a drink or have a smoke and just sit back and just look at the fruits of his labor. Or yeah. it's you know not about. I, mean? I don't think it's about having you know? a vice. It, it, it's about what you let that advice do to you. You know what I mean? Like some people can just yeah. like scale it back and say, I'm going to do this because I need to, you know, and then, you know, when you take it too far, it becomes I mean, your way to deal with everything. Between, difference between having a drink and having a smoke and doing eight lines of cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> it's big. Yeah. Yeah. And well, now, okay. I'm listening. And now you said that you're still involved with training people. So are you still keeping an eye on the sport yourself? And, and if you are, and, and if you are, who are some of the guys right now that you enjoy watching? Um, Tank Davis. I'm a, I'm 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 a really big fan of Tank Davis. He really loves Tank. Yeah, I uh, get that a lot. Um, I like the smaller guys. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, yeah, I, I'm still we we do too. And I think I think it's it's funny because I think when I was coming up out of amateur boxing, um, with USA box, the the smaller guys gravitated to the heavyweights. Yeah. And they, Gravitate to the smaller guys. That's how I am. I watch all the smaller guys. Um, the heavyweight, well, I'm going to say the 168, uh, 75. I've been watching. I, I went to uh, I went to Montreal a few years ago. Sparred with a guy. And Arthur Bedeby was in camp. We love him. We love him. And, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I like him. And I think he's going to, I'm just waiting to see this next fight. With Bevo. Yeah, that's, that's going to be, that's going to be a tough one. Yeah, yeah, we've actually had uh, yeah, uh, uh, we, we've actually had uh, uh, Iceman John Scully on a few times, and he's his co-trainer. So I mean, uh, yeah, I mean we're big beater BF guys, man. No, I'm, I'm curious to know because you know you're in Houston, Texas. 
and, and Spencer's a Texas guy. We just saw the big fight of Spence and Crawford. And obviously, it looks like a rematch. doesn't even look like it's in order right now. I don't think they're going to do it, but uh, it was in talk. So I'm curious to know, just know what your take of that and him was on that night. Because you, I just you know, want to preface with, before you go, I just want to say, like, Errol Spence is my guy right now. Like, he's my I, favorite fighter. I, I, I fuck with him every day. I love Errol. But yeah. you know what's bad? I can say this, and uh, and I hope Ronnie Shields don't get mad at me for, for, for this quote. <laughs> Ronnie Shields and I, this is when I was working with Ronnie Shields and helping him with his fighters. Um, we was at the um, – Earl was fighting Ugas. Mm -hmm. And I think before they even mentioned Earl fighting Crawford. So we're sitting there, we're watching the fight, and I looked at Ronnie. I said, Ronnie, say what you think. I said, who you go with, Earl or uh, Crawford? Bye. And Ronnie looked at me. And when I say this, Ronnie's been up. Like, I've been knowing Ronnie maybe 20, 26 years now. Yeah. He's never been wrong with nothing. He said, when I say he's a genius, yeah. he's a, 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 him and Emmanuel Stewart. One are, of the great traders. Yeah. And he's, like I say, I, like I say I, I'm not working with him anymore. But just the point, he's, he's been wrong. He When he studied fights, he see it. And he's gonna give you the right, the right, the right way to go and beat this person. So I asked Ronnie. I said, Ronnie, I said, what do you think? Ronnie looked at me. Uh, Crawford's gonna stop him. So I went to what the fuck? Excuse me. I'm like, what the fuck? I said, how do you? Where do you see that at, Ronnie? Yeah. And he, Spence can't. He can't mess with Crawford. I yeah. said, how, Ronnie? From from you watching this, he Crawford's gonna stop him. Yeah. And two year, two and a half years later. I text Ronnie. This was after the fight. I text him. I said, you never been wrong. Yeah. Uh, the street goes on. <laughs> well, I'm going to say this. Um, I, I, I love Earl. I like Crawford. They, they're both they're both great for boxing. Yeah. Um, my thing was I we seen we seen the fight. I don't I don't want to see another fight. Yeah. I don't. I mean, I mean, if whatever you did wrong. It, I mean, what can you do to me? What can you do? I'm not going to talk about anybody's coach because I feel like the coaching, somebody, I'm not saying coaching in that fight, but I feel like coaching could have been a problem. I feel yeah. like um, you're supposed to have more than one game plan. Yeah. Because I'm coaching. And um, and like I say, I, I don't know if a lot of people, that's what I'm doing, but I'm working with a few fighters. I'm on my way to Vegas to um, fighters out there here soon. But my thing is, I have three game plans. I have at least, yeah, yes. I have the first game plan that we originally had. The second game plan, and if both of them go out to win, then we're just gonna fucking gonna make it a double fight. Yeah, yeah. I felt like in in some of the fights we just saw recently, uh, the coach didn't have a one game plan because he was so used to this fighter going in there just blowing out, blowing out everybody out. And I well, agree. What do you do when, when your fight is not blowing them out? Now you yeah. got to be able to talk to them and tell them, okay, hey, give you some kind of instructions to get away from getting hit with the, the left hand, getting hit with the counter. Cause yeah. And let's also not forget, too, that in Errol Spence's defense, he's been through a hell of a lot these last couple of years. Eye surgeries, that horrible car crash. I mean – you know, yeah. thank God he walked away from. But I mean, uh, you know, uh, you know, obviously uh, we were just talking about men and being aware of our health. He may have to step back and really assess: is it worth going on? You know, I mean, he's made a lot of money in this sport. He's got a beautiful family. I mean, there is stuff more important. You know. Yes, and and I'm gonna be honest with you. He's he's made his name. Yeah. Like like uh uh Jamel Charlo. If he does not come, back, this is my argument to that fight. Okay, what what do people really expect from somebody going up from 154 pounds to right. 168, two weight classes? What did you really expect? Did you expect him to go in there and try to fight Canelo? Right. Now you got a problem because he's run. Uh, he was smart. Yeah, he it's was one, smart. Yeah. Everybody say that oh, they want to go out on the shield. Do you really want to go out on the shield if you get knocked out cold? You're right. not going to come back the same. Right. Now, now, before we let you go and enjoy your Sunday and, uh, and wrap it up here, we got to ask, because you brought it up at the top of the interview, we are going to see in a couple of weeks uh, uh, the first undisputed heavyweight fight we've seen in quite a while, Fury, Usyk. We already know that you're not a, the biggest fan of Fury. You've got some history with him. Putting all that aside, though, if you had to make a prediction how this fight ends, how does it end? 
Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think I think it's gonna be a, a, a they're gonna box. It's gonna be a boxing match. Fury is gonna be trying. I, I think Fury is gonna try to come out and and try to knock him out. But uh, Yusuf is Olympian, a, Olympic gold medal, yep. with tons of experience. Been in there with heavyweights. I think it's gonna go to distance, and it wouldn't surprise me if it's a draw. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think uh, uh, Yusuf is gonna box the shit out of him. Um, I don't know. I don't think Yusuf has the power. If if he had Deontay Wilder's hands, power punching power in his hands, then I think he'll get him out of there. But, but I think it's gonna be a draw. But do you, but do you think that like Fury could come in there and implore some of those tactics he did against Wilder, like leaning the weight on him and nope. throwing? I no, think Usyk might, yeah, I agree. I think Usyk might be too slick for those no. tricks. Yeah, he's, he's too smart. He, yeah. uh, he, 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 think about all the fights he had in the amateurs and all that. He's he's built up his pedigree. He's ready. He's ready for that. And I'm yeah. pretty sure he has some big guys in sparring. But, I mean, his game plan is not going to be to go in there and, and stand in front of this guy and let him lean on you and all that. Oh, you're going to box. Yeah. Box. And, and I also, and I I also just, like I just, that. Well, I, I just got to say, I just love hearing you guys tell me. That's yeah. it. I just asked <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you guys <laughs> well, that's, my, that's my game plan. I'm just sitting there saying I've I've been saying this. Uh I say it all the time. Hopefully y'all can put it out there for me too. Um I'm here in Houston, Texas, but I'm just to relocate. I'm gonna be in Las Vegas helping my buddy Fareed and Bone Adams with a few fighters out there. I'm gonna be back and forth. Bones Adams. We've had bones on, but yeah, another great guy. Boy, my boy, but yeah. Uh, I'm trying to get my name out there because I really believe I'm going to be a Hall of Fame coach. I wasn't, I didn't become a Hall of Fame fighter. I didn't get what I wanted, but I'm trying to take a guy to the next level. And uh, God has equipped me with, and, and I, I'm honestly, honest with you, I really think that uh, I'm going to be a great boxing coach. I and can't I'm gonna... wait for that. I can't wait for that. And just know this too, that when you train with Dominic Wynn, you might actually get to the point where you can knock a guy out and have him wake up with your dick in his mouth. Uh, if especially if his last name is Tyson Fury, first name is Tyson, last name is Fury. Yeah, because that's the kind of <laughs> that's the kind of experience. That's the kind of experience and wisdom and, and know how that you can get from a Dominic Gwynn right there. Come on. Hold on, let's put that out there. Put it you out there. When, that. when Yusuf, when Yusuf knock him out over there in Saudi Arabia, yeah. I Fly me out there, and when he wake up, I'm gonna put my dick in his mouth. Ah! Awesome, awesome, yes, yes. Chuck, yeah. Chuck one up for the uh, Chuck one up uh, against the big dosser because he's always insulting everybody else. America's coming back, man. We got Dominic Wynn who has trumped you by saying he would knock you out and you'd wake up with his dick in his mouth. I mean, come on, that's a mic and, drop right and, there. And on top of that, if Usyk knock you out, you might end up with his dick in your mouth. Hey, yes, yeah. 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 I'm gonna put it in your mouth. Yeah. Listen, Dominic, man, I'm glad we finally got a chance to do this. First of all, please stay in touch. We'd love to have you back on again, man. This was really fun chopping it up with you. Enjoy the rest of your oh, Sunday. Man, Enjoy love, the hey, cigar. You too, man. I appreciate y'all for having me. Uh, Team Gwen Boxing on Instagram. If you're Shout looking for it. Out. And uh, I do travel. I got a valid passport. My stamps, all that is good. Appreciate y'all, baby. Y'all take yeah, care. Shout, yeah. yeah shout, um, I'm sure he found you on Facebook, but I'm about to hit you up with a friend of Crest Frank Benji's. Find me on there. I'm 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 gonna hit you. Yeah. I appreciate y'all. Take care. We appreciate you, champ. Thank you so much. Good talking to you. You too. Yep. Bye bye. And we deliver once again. I'm I'm getting sick of. I'm trying to find different ways to praise uh, our own virtues here at the end and not come off as as I said earlier, too cocky and arrogant as opposed to confident. But I mean, come on, folks. Tap in, man. Nobody's doing it like OTCB off the couch boxing delivers man deliver so please like and follow us on facebook with that being said and if you're watching yeah. us right now go up to the top of your screen like subscribe hit the notification bell alexis arguello puppet said so we're giving you we're giving them constant evidence of why we keep producing right huh you keep saying at the end of the episodes that we keep producing and we're yeah. just giving them evidence, right? Yeah, we're just giving, yes, visual evidence, which is always going to be great. Like when you're going to plead your case in court, I mean, come on, man, you just take out, I mean, come on, you just go to our YouTube channel and say, I'm sorry, Your Honor, but these guys are, are it's not slander. It's not libel. These guys aren't talking out of school. These episodes are fucking amazing. Right. Every single last fucking one of them. Yeah. And what else and, would and you honestly, expect? And honestly, 
it's like, especially when we keep them to a half an hour, it's like beautiful. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to always guarantee that we will always do that. You know, I mean, sometimes, you know what I mean? Like we're fans no, we, too. We, sometimes we, if we, we get a guy on here. here. We have fun and loosen up from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, if we've got them scheduled and we've got them stacked, you know, on the old calendar and we have to keep them to that. But I mean, you, you know, if the schedule is wide open and we can get a little loose with a guest on here, man, and we can go a little longer. I, I you know, IE, we've certainly gone more than 30 minutes in our format. As I mentioned, we've, you know, we've got an hour plus with guys. We run an hour plus with Mason Menard, like Abea Bucci. You know what I mean? A lot of guys, we've gone 45 minutes, 50 minutes, you know. So it's not cut and dry. It just depends on how the conversation's flowing. And, of course, if the guest has uh, time constraints, certainly always respect and honor those, man. But uh, thank you to the Southern Disaster. Forgot to shout out his nickname. Dominic Gwynn, 38, 13, and 1, 26 knockouts. And I don't even want to go into the resume, but I guess I probably should. I'll just – you know, just to let you know that he's that guy, Junior Fa, Arthur Zbilka, as he mentioned, Huey Fury, Tomas uh, Adamic, uh, Kubret Pulov, and of course, this is according to Box Rec, Eddie Chambers, uh, our old buddy James Tony, who we lost to UD to, Audley Harrison, Sergei Lakayevich, who I had on the old pod scum, uh, Monty Barrett, another friend of the show. So uh, 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 the undefeated monster, uh, Michael Grant, he fought back in the day. And I'm not giving you, you know, the outcomes here. I'm just telling you, these are the motherfuckers that Dominic Wynn was in the ring with. Uh, just getting in the ring with those gentlemen that I just named is uh, in and of itself a huge monumental feat. Win, lose, or draw, that's a warrior right there who stepped in the ring and did it against other warriors, man. And, uh, you know, of course, always shout out Houston. Shout out to the guys in Houston that we love. Red, shout out Reggie Sweet Johnson. Shout out to shout out the Fifth Ward Posse and the legendary Ghetto Boys. Come on, greatest rap group in the history. Are you gonna Are you gonna, are you gonna hit them with your AKAs? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, of course you know me as 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 uh, Reckless Rex Ruger, but I mean, wait, we gotta we gotta preface with that this is a new thing. Yeah, we've kind of created that. We're just trying to, you know what I mean? Yeah. And if you think that if you're a viewer and you think one out there really fits us, man. And then we should add it. Now, you know, a lot of these could be personal inside jokes or whatever, man. But, you know, I think uh, a la Apollo Creed, uh, when Rocky trained him in Rocky IV, uh, you know, when you step out there, it's not bad to have a couple of AKAs. And, of course, we're going to take everything to extremes as we do on Off the Couch Boxing. So having a lot of AKs is better than having a little AK, a little bit of AKAs. We're going, we're going, we're taking our AKAs and we're going Wu-Tang style. Yeah. And now mind you, now you're not going to hear the, uh, you know, you're not going to hear the unabridged list every time you will just hear uh, uh, Reckless Rex Ruger and any uh, new AKAs that have cropped up. You want to hear the old ones. So you go back and, and watch old episodes because I'm sure this list is going to get quite lengthy by the time it's all over, but I will start. Uh, uh, Reckless Rex Ruger, uh, and I might have to read a couple of these. I'm trying to get better at memorizing them. Reckless Rex Ruger, aka the Wrecker, aka Spiggity Spark B, aka the West Side Samurai, aka the Ganja Ninja, aka Captain Iron Lungs, aka the Clown Puncher, aka the Bearded Lover, aka Jim Kanaga, aka Upstate Loco, aka White Tyson, aka the Prince Protege, aka Mr. Chubby Brister. AKA Captain Uppercut, AKA Jabby Gleason, AKA Wolfman Jab, AKA Hammer Hands. Thank you. Thank you. That was a whole lot. Yeah. You had, you had a whole lot of them. Well, I got, 51, I, I, I got 51 years on this earth, man. So there's been a lot of AKAs. It is my birthday tomorrow. At the time of recording this, it's January 28th. Shout out to our January 29th birthdays. Yep. But you can always just refer back to me as Reckless. Reckless Rex Ruger. But try to lock a few of those in, folks. Okay. Right, it helps. Hey, listen. I don't got as many as he just named right there. But, but it will we, got, we got a little collection started. And you know what I mean? We're only working towards the greater goal of having infinity. There may be a book in the works with just our AKAs. Right. That's that's the ultimate goal is to have so many that it could fill a book. And when, said, say, and when said book is done, it will be in excess of 300 pages. I got to say that my AKAs would look something like this. Frank Benji's, a.k.a. 
Frankie the Flamethrower. Oh, yeah. A.K.A. R.B. Cash. A.K.A. The Blackwood Blazer. A.K.A. Mr. Ropey Nux. A.K.A. Frankie Finesse. A.K.A. Gary Busey. A.K.A. Benji's for three. A.K.A. Dirty Dan. A.K.A. Big Bucket Benji's. A.K.A. The Hash Slinging Slasher. A.K.A. The Flying Dutchman. You fucked up one of your AKs, though. You called yourself flat out Gary Busey. It should be Baby Busey. Baby Busey. Yeah. First I'm listen. Whatever, first dude. listen. You I'm, already made a faux pas. I'm, ba- I'm Baby Busey. I'm Gary Busey. Yeah. Yeah, but you want to be Baby Busey. There's only one Gary Busey. Let's face it, man. I mean, if you want to be an offshoot, man, then you've got to be Baby Busey. I mean, yeah. you have to be. And obviously, and obviously, there will be plenty more where those came from. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I'm sure our audience is waited with bated breath. Uh, and that's obviously tongue in cheek. I say that with the utmost sarcasm to see from episode to episode what will be the unveiling of the new AKAs. But uh, like I said, Apollo Creed, you know, and even Rocky said to him, geez, you got enough nicknames. Hey, he- I got to say, I fit a lot of SpongeBob references in there. So if you're a young fan and you're with us and you grew up fucking post in 1990, you get a lot of those. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, he was the master of disaster. He was the Count of Monte Fisto. He was uh, uh, this, that, you know, Apollo Creed had a bunch of them too. Maybe not as long as our list will get, but the man knew the importance of shouting out himself, which is always important. You got to be your own biggest fan. I'm even going to give myself a slap on the back here for all the great work that I've been doing. Alexis Arguello puppet's not going to do it because his hands don't work. But that being said, I'm going to pat myself on the back because, you know, We've really been digging in the crates here, man, trying to find the greatest interviews and just guys that we want to shout out and show love to that aren't all over plaster, all over YouTube, man. Guys like Cold Blood Clark, guys like Lamar Kid Fire Parks, guys like uh, 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 Ike Bayabuchi, you know what I mean? You know, uh, guys that are on the come up, guys with under 10 fights that nobody's sticking a microphone in their face, man. Come here, man. We love to give a platform to guys on the come up and, of course, our legends and luminaries goes without saying always going to give love to them, man. And, uh, I mean, look, we're, we're networking quite well. We just had an interview with Dominic Wynn and, uh, several guys that we've had on the show came up in that conversation We're you know, we're making our rounds through the boxing world. So jump on the ride with us, man. It's always amazing. New content every week. Sometimes the day differs, but we usually shoot for Sundays and Mondays. If you go to our channel, new shit will be up. Yeah, he was talking about going to Vegas and linking up with the great Bowen Adams. Yeah, and so keep an eye out uh, because he's going to be re- relocating, as he said, uh, to Nevada. Uh, certainly up-and-coming boxers that are out in that uh, that bustling Nevada area, and, and it is the flight capital of the world. Uh, be on the lookout. You can learn a thing or two from a guy like Dominic Wynn. I mean, come on, man. I, I just named off uh, one hell of a resume. Come and, on, uh, dude. You walk into a gym and you walk into Dominic Gwynn and Bones Adams. Yeah, yeah. Just make sure that the first thing that you don't ask Dominic Gwynn to show you, wait till you're in a little bit. Like everyone starts karate lessons and they want to know, you know, how to do the most deadly of moves inside the first two weeks. You know, don't go into Dominic Gwynn and expect him to show you how to knock a guy out and get your dick in his mouth right away. That's coming. You know, that's part of the advanced course. Right. That's not, that's not bare bones. Yeah. You don't learn the secrets. Uh, you, you know, you, you know, you don't get to learn, uh, you know, the secrets of the ninja, uh, yep. uh you know, uh, th- that I, gotta fact. Say, I gotta say, man, as baby Busey, I should say, shout out Gary Busey because baby Busey and Gary Busey can both go 15 seconds with anything. And I would like to remind you, well, first let me shout out uh, Dominic, the Southern disaster, Gwyn. Thanks for coming on here. Love chopping it up with him. And remember, if you want to be a champion, then you have to roll with the champs.